Hey friend, and welcome to this video on mobile reflections. Just on my way to a meeting, and I thought I'd share a word with my brothers and sisters here on the land of YouTube and online media. As I'm reflecting on our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I realize that Daniel 8.14 is of the utmost importance. When God brought out his movement, his end time movement, he gave them an understanding of Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, which says, unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. If this text was removed from the Bible, there would be no Seventh-day Adventist church. It was integral to our movement. Time prophecies, the prophecies of the scriptures were integral to our movement. Up to 2,300 days, then the sanctuary would be cleansed. We know as Adventists, time prophecies, and we understand that a day equals a year in prophetic understanding. We know from Numbers chapter 14 and Ezekiel chapter 4, we know how a day represents a year. So up to 2,300 years, then the sanctuary would be cleansed. We understand from the book of Daniel again that there would be this time determined from the going forth to rebuild and restore. And that time period in Daniel chapter 9 points to the fact and points to Ezra. And in Ezra, we read about this command to go and restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And uh, that began and that decree was made in 457 B.C. 457 BC. So if we go 2,300 years from 457 BC, we get 1843. Now we know William Miller and the Millerites and others believed that Jesus was coming back in 1843, but it didn't happen. We're still here today. We're still longing and waiting for the second coming of Christ. Now other individuals and denominations like to take this fact and mock Seventh-day Adventists and mock our movement because we set time and Jesus didn't come back. And we know time setting is wrong. So in 1843, Jesus didn't come back. That's a sad point. But also what William Miller and others didn't understand was that in calculating time, there is what's called the year zero. Now there's no such thing as the year zero, so you have to add a year in your time calculation, which would make it 1844. The specific date that they thought of next was October 22nd, 1844. That day didn't come as well. Jesus didn't come back. And I remember these disappointments and other kindred disappointments harken back to the time of the early church. The early church, they believed in the imminent return of Jesus in their lifetime, and that didn't happen. And at the end of the day, friends, we're on God's time schedule, not ours. It's all about God. It's all about his time. And God, he's prolonging the time, or he is delaying, apparently, because he loves us and he wants us to be saved. He's giving enough time for all of us to repent. Jesus wants you saved. He wants me saved. So Jesus is coming back. Rest assured of that. But it's on God's time, not our time. And he hasn't have set a point day when he is going to return. So I praise God that he has assured us with this truth. Now, what was happening in the time prophecy, October 22nd, 1844? Well, it was the cleansing of the sanctuary. The sanctuary wasn't the earth. The sanctuary was the sanctuary in heaven. Hebrews tells us about that. And we know that Moses, he was given uh, the instructions to build the tabernacle according to the pattern. The pattern where? The pattern in heaven. So the cleansing of the sanctuary began, and the work of investigative judgment began on October 22nd, 1844. So right now, we are the people of the judgment. And we remember in Revelation chapter 3, there's the church of judgment, Laodicea. And it's the end times church, the end times people. The people under which people are being judged. We are being examined. And during this examination, we shouldn't be scared, we shouldn't be upset about it, we should be joyful about it. Because if we're connected with Jesus, and we are justified by faith through him, when God looks at a record and he looks at us, when we've repented and confessed all of our sins, he looks at us as if he's looking at Jesus. Jesus' perfect record is imputed to us. That is the imputed righteousness of God. But then there's the imparted righteousness of God. So, I don't know how old you are, you might be 20 years old, you might be 40 years old, you might be 50, 60 years old. But during this time in your life, you're going through a day-by-day -day process called sanctification. This sanctification process, this process of becoming more holy, is a day-by-day -day experience. Day-by-day -day growth, day-by-day -day experience. So don't get discouraged when you fall. A righteous man gets up and a righteous woman gets up several times. You can get back up after you fall in sin 
and you can get victory over your sin with due time. Don't worry, Jesus' imputed righteousness is given to you, and his imparted, imparted righteousness is a day-by-day -day process which we um, receive day by day. So yes, we're living during the time of the investigative judgment. Yes, there was a disappointment, but don't worry. We're following in the footsteps of the early church that was before us, and we're growing in progressive revelation in the knowledge of God and his truth. Remember, October 22nd, 1844, the 2300 days of Daniel 814, these things are all foundational to our church. Without these things, we would never exist. And I praise God that he's calling people such as you and I into the faith for these last days to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ's second coming because we are Seventh-day Adventists. God bless you and keep you until we study again.